G'day guys, Bucky here. Welcome to another player focus edition of My Blue Heaven. If you're new to the channel, um, the reason why I started these um, player profile videos and why they've become such a regular part of the calendar um, all began way back uh, after the round two game against Melbourne when Will Setterfield was dreadfully out of form um, and fans were calling for his head, um, wanting him out of the team. City was another GWS reject, poor pickup by Sauce, um, and it all started. So I thought I'd do a profile on him, see if we could get him back into form. Um, and it's just rolled on since then. We've had Matthew Kennedy, uh, Zach Fisher, uh, before he came back into the team. And then last week, uh, we had Paddy Dow, who unfortunately hasn't had that opportunity to play yet, but we're hoping he will. Um, look, it's easy just to identify high draft picks or bloke that, blokes that you're expecting to play. Um, I think that's probably an easy option from my point of view um, to do that. So I want to go a little bit left to centre um, in this, in this uh, player focus edition. Um, and you probably already caught on through the promo who I'm going to talk about. But this, this player genuinely is intriguing me at the moment for a number of reasons, and that's Cameron Paulson. Um, so if you've just about fallen over because you've heard the name Cameron Paulson, um, I'll just repeat it. This video is on Cameron Paulson. Yes, the number 29, Cameron Paulson. Um, and that might surprise a lot of you, and I reckon most of you out there would have definitely have Cam's uh, papers well and truly stamped, and th and that's that's justified. I think I think you're well and truly uh, within your rights uh, to say that. And look, the facts are that he's probably less likely to be at the club next year. In fact, you know he, he's probably ninety percent sure that he'll be delisted at the end of the year. And the fact as well that he's yet to play um, a game, yet to play a game folks under David Teague uh, as well um, probably suggests that his, his, his time um, at the club could come to an end uh, quite abruptly however however I'm not I'm not actually giving hope I'm not actually giving up hope on Cam Paulson in fact I'm not giving up hope on him at all um, because of the change in positions, the change in roles, and I think a change in a role gives a player a new lease of life, even when they're young. Um, it gives them a new focus, and it gives them a new skill set um, that they may have not known they had before, and the attributes that made them drafted um, can come to the fore in a different part of the ground. Um, and a part of the ground where he, he's clearly all right, clearly feeling a lot more comfortable um, than he was previously. So I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so what I'm talking about there, he's gone from small forward, um, a pressure small forward, and now he's been transformed into a running, a running and attacking small defender. Um, which is exciting, which is really exciting because I think on our list, I think on our list, it's an area that can still can still be improved. Now, whether whether Cam's going to be that person um, is is yeah, it, it's it's probably unlikely. Uh, but that an opportunity, I, I truly believe, an opportunity is going to come for Cam Paulson this year, and whether he's able to take that opportunity with both hands. It's going to be really interesting. Let's do a quick snapshot. We don't know a lot about him because he hadn't done a lot, okay? What I like to do is just do a little bit of synopsis, a little bit of background. Cam Paulson, 22 years of age, uh, fourth year on the list, pick 59 in 2016 draft out of the Sandy Dragons. Same draft, Sauce took SBS, Fisher, McCready, um, Paulson in that order, then Williamson. Williamson, what a pickup at 661, Okay. Um, McCready at 59, speculative. Anything post 50, I reckon, is speculative. Um, in fact, most picks are, you know, you're taking a bit of punt sometimes. Um, 
we didn't know a lot about Paulson coming into the draft because he was injured for most of his draft year. And he played the three games, had a severe shoulder injury. Um, and you notice his shoulder is taped. It's always taped. Um, that came through an operation in his draft year. Um, he captained his school football team, Halebury College. Um, and have a listen to the names of these players that were in his school football team um, the year that he played. Okay, Jack Scrimshaw, Josh Battle, both Hamish and Andrew Brayshaw, a young Luke Davies Uniaki. This is the, his school football team which he was captain of. Charlie Constable from the Cats. And listen to this, two 16-year-olds, okay? Ben and Max King. That is quite unbelievable. The goal, though, in that came in the rookie draft in 2016. Rowan Marshall, Cam Zerha, Peter Laddams, Jack Henry, and Oscar McInerney. They're the, they're the guys that came in the rookie draft who we could have taken instead of Cam Paulson. Because after Paulson, I mean, other than Luke Ryan, who's been outstanding at the Fremantle Dockers as a mature age recruit, pick 66, you know, it wasn't a lot. You know, Nick Lark, he's been okay at North, Harry Morrison, and... Uh, Mitch Lewis of Hawthorne, yeah, okay. Uh, Paddy Kerr, who we took at 65, has been delisted. And I think Dylan Clark has played a few games at Essendon this year. Well, remember, he was picked 63. Um, he was the boy that uh, did that job on Paddy Cripps last year. The guy that I liked, though, was the pick after, the pick after Cam Paulson at pick 60. That's Quinton Narkle. Um, I reckon he's going to be okay, Quinton Narkle. Um, he's in and out of the Geelong, a very strong, strong Geelong team at the moment. Hit and miss. Okay, so pick 59 is hit and miss. And you would have to say at this stage, a little bit of a miss. 16 games out of a possible 77 for Cam Paulson. Um, and has yet to play a game under David T. So he's broke down one game in his first season, made a debut very, very early over at the Adelaide Oval against Port Adelaide um, in an absolute thumping. Didn't do a lot in that game. Spent the rest of the year in the VFL. 2018, he racked up the 12 games, but probably from his point of view, he established himself in a pretty poor team, mind you, in the back end of the season where he played the last 10 games. And it was probably one time where Brendan Bolton and Stephen Silvani were... Uh, it was rumoured that they were sort of locking horns at that stage. Uh, they're actually on the same page because not only did he play the last 10 games, Cam Paulson, but he also signed a two-year contract um, during that time in 2018. Um, but, yeah, it came as a bit of a surprise, didn't it, when he signed that contract uh, because he wasn't sort of setting the world on fire as that small forward. Um, he kicked just the four goals, averaging seven disposes and three tackles. Um, he was known, I suppose, as a young player to, to you know, turn the ball over by foot. Uh, you know, showed a little bit of burst of speed, but didn't win a lot of the pill and only played the three games last year. So once T took over, uh, we sort of thought then and there that that could have been it for, for Paulson. But the fact that he was contracted, it was going to be hard for the club to not so much get rid of him, but... Um, yeah, it meant that he had to come back, um, but they're giving him an opportunity and a new role. When he did sign that contract, the comments, the com comments are always interesting from then uh, head of footy, Andy McKay, said uh, it was all about his, his work ethic, Cam Paulson's work ethic. Um, hard working, determination to improve, um, and wants to learn, okay? He's got this appetite to learn from his teammates, uh, which spoke volumes about uh, Cam Paulson at that stage. Even Paulson himself said, I'm a big believer, okay, that you get out of life what you're willing to put in, which suggests that he works really, really hard. And I've noticed that about Cam Paulson um, at training. Okay, that he uh, that he's a, he's a really 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 hard worker. Um, he tries to, to do everything right, um, you know. And I think I think footy clubs love love we'll, we'll chuck away the ability at times. Football clubs love players um, that want to be there, that want to put in the work. Um, and I think that's probably been his main attribute and one of the reasons why um, he's remained for the four years on the list. Um, I think 
the thing that excites me about the change of role, as I said before, has been the the match reports from Dan O'Keefe, who's been involved with the development of the players coming through. Um, you know, particularly the young players, the first year players, uh, blokes coming back from injury, playing in those scratch matches. Uh, you know, you take the reports with a grain of salt because let's face it. I'd probably get a kick in some of the games, 12 on 12, 14 on 14, so much space. Um, but the things that, are, that, that impress me, obviously he's got his main weapon, okay? So we're looking at his strengths or his speed. He's always had really good speed. And, he's, and he actually can find the pill. Um, he can find the pill because he was adri- averaging in that last year in his three games in the TAC, he was averaging 18 disposals So he, as a forward. So he could find the pill. Um, you know, he didn't show that in his early games with us, but he has got that speed and he can find the ball. Um, and not only speed, but he's got that burst of speed. Uh, he can accelerate really quickly and he's got that power. Um, and he's got relatively good because he's quite thick set in the lower half. He's actually got um, quite good balance as well and he keeps his feet. I think that's his main attributes. And I think the weakness is always... always um, you know, in that early part of his career when he was playing as a small forward, was his really poor decision making. Um, he couldn't read the play. Um, well, he struggled to read the play and uh, adjust to the tempo of AFL football or senior AFL football. And I think what he does struggle in, a bit similar to what Zach Fisher, and I think I may have even mentioned it in, in Fisher's uh, player focus video last week, that I do notice in the uh, in the endurance type work that Cam Polson is usually, you know, he's at the back of the group, suggesting that, uh, you know, endurance doesn't come naturally to him. And I think his repeat efforts, his repeat efforts was something of a weakness for him. But his decision-making and his boy use by foot, um, even when he wasn't under pressure, wasn't it was average. It was average at best, uh, bordering on pretty poor. Um, so the thing that I've been really pleased about from the reports uh, is not the burst from half back, which which Dan O'Keefe has said on a number of occasions that has been brilliant. But his ball use, okay, as, as the season gone on, his ball use has been fantastic. But more importantly, his ball use under pressure has been fantastic and his decision-making under pressure has been fantastic as well. And this is every report. And he's been emergency on a number of different occasions. Now, if we're led to believe David Teague, we're led to believe about selection integrity, uh, that he's going to reward players who are banging down the door um, and they're playing really, really good football at the lower level. Um, and these players can't help it that they're not fair in football games. They've got to play somewhere. Um, so you can only assess them on what they're playing. And he wouldn't be the first player this year to get an opportunity playing in that environment of football. There's been a number of players who've come through, including Josh Honey last week. Then... Paulson's got to play at some t- stage this year. Now, with a busy schedule coming up, I can see him getting that opportunity. I can see him getting that opportunity as a small defender. And you never, never know. He's other, I suppose, as a, as a small defender, okay, he's the fourth smallest player, shortest player. Now, I copped it. I copped it um, the other week about Zach Fisher because height doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. But when you're a defender, um, it just limits your ability to play a little bit taller. Uh, now, the beauty of a, of a Tom Williamson is he can play small and he can play, you know, he can take that medium size forward as well. Whereas with with a, with a, um, with a Cam Paulson at 177 centimetres, is the fourth shortest player on the list behind Betts, Fisher and Gibbons. He's pretty much limited to playing, um, you know, on, on a real small type. Like, you know, he'd play on an Eddie Betts. He'd play on a Zach Fisher. Okay, which is okay because there are, mostly there are a lot of smaller type forwards in the competition, but it does limit his ability to, to play small and medium. And he's not, I wouldn't call him great overhead or a particularly strong mark. But he has got breakaway speed. Now, I think, I think with our backs 
BACs this year. So we look at our BACs this year, okay? And it's been a really, really settled lineup. And this makes it a little bit more difficult for Colson to break into that, into that lineup. So you look at the talls. Jones, Weedering have been, they've been your number two key BACs and Doc as your third tall who can play small and tall as well. Okay, and we saw that over the last couple of weeks. He's played on Walters, um, you know, and he played on Darling the week before. Okay, so he can take that job. Then you've got Jones, and I mentioned him, Weedering. Then the others, you've got Willow, okay, and you've got Fish. The, the interesting ones for me are Simo and SBS. Now, I'm not giving up hope on Sam Petresky's seat becoming a defender, but as each game goes by, um, questions are going to continue, not only from us as supporters, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what we think, but surely internally, there will be, there will have to come a time where SBS is giving an opportunity further up the ground, which opens up a spot in the back half for a Cam Paulson. And with, with Simo as well. Now, what those boys aren't providing, not any of those defenders aren't providing, is run out of the back half. Even Doherty's run has dried up. SBS is really not giving us a lot of run, okay, out of the back half. And what we've noticed with Simo this year is become quite a lockdown small defender and his run and his possessions have dried up as well. So to me, I think it's going to happen. I really do. I think we're going to see Cam Paulson and this, this is not going to sit well with a lot of supporters, okay? We're going to see him play this year. I am 100% sure of that. Um, I'm willing to cop one for the team if he doesn't either. But when he comes in, he's like, because he's on his last, he'd be on his last chance. He's going to have to perform. He's going to have to perform. And it's going to be a really, really big, big opportunity for him. Smaller list sizes next year, which is on the cards. A lot of players are going to go, he's out of contract. Um, so time will run out. I've always liked him, okay? I've always liked him. Um, just because, like a lot of your Liam Jones and your Levi Casbots, they're maligned. And when you're a malign player, um, I don't know, there's a, you empathise with them, okay? Not so much sympathise with them, you just empathise with them and try and put yourselves in their own shoes and what they're going through. Um, and I bloody hope he's, he's ready to go. I really do. And I think he's got the right attitude. Um, I just hope he hits the ground running when he gets that opportunity, whether that's this week, whether that's the week after, whether it's that, that, that group of games when it becomes really busy. We'll just have to wait and see. If you like this edition of Player Focus, can you please give it a like, um, share it around, whatever you need to do, subscribe, um, and I'll see you guys again shortly. Next week, hopefully we're talking a massive, massive win against the Gold Coast Suns to keep our finals hopes alive. See you later.